Joining us now is Yan Lian. She's a professor of economics at Willamette University. Uh, Yan, thanks for uh, being with us again. Uh, Wang Yi started his press conference by taking questions about COVID-19 and really pointing to uh, China's role in a global response. That's, of course, different than the tone under uh, President, uh, former President Donald Trump, but also in terms of China's global responsibility and the lead it's taken, still a bit different from current President Joe Biden. Yes. Um Thanks for having me, Roy. Um, so I think uh, uh, Wang Yi has pointed out very clearly that um, he condemns, you know, vaccine nationalism and he calls for global coordination and cooperation in fighting the vaccine. Um, uh, sorry, fighting the COVID-19. And I think, you know, it's clear from the very beginning, um, China has cooperated in, you know, the um, origin of the virus and it has cooperated in, you know, vaccine de development. And now um, it also, you know, it only has about three to four percent of vaccination rate domestically because of that the virus has been kept in control very well from early on. So now it has to know that it in, uh, donated uh, vaccines to over 50 developing nations in the world. So I think you know China is not just talk, walking the, uh, talking the talks, but also walking the walk. Um, it's really making a lot of efforts, um, coordinating with you know other countries and WHO, um, trying to fight um, the pandemic. The U.S. and China are the world's two largest economies. China is aiming, uh, it said this year, for impressive economic growth which speaks, of course, to its confidence in its own COVID recovery. But might it not be thrown off by global economic factors if, for example, countries like the U.S. don't recover the way China has? Absolutely. There's always this uncertainty um, how pandemic is going to evolve in the rest of the world, um, not to mention the geopolitical risks. Um, so I think, you know, on the one hand, China is making efforts to help other countries to, um, you know, keep the uh, pandemic under control. And on the other hand, I think China is really reorienting its economy in many different ways, um, trying to boost domestic demand, trying to improve its own supply chain, um, trying to develop more homegrown technologies. So I think, you know, China is uh, preparing um, for uh, an uncertain, uncertain uh, year. Here in Washington, there's been a, a political tug of war over the so-called Green New Deal. Now China is talking about a green Great Wall with uh, green GDP at its core. How does this differ as a plan from what Beijing has done up until now? Right. I think it's clear on climate change issues. China and um, U.S. share this common interest and common goals, uh, being the two largest emitters of the world. Um, I think it's very important for both countries to have strategic and sustainable development programs and, and plans going forward. So China has made very firm commitment to uh, peak the carbon emission by 2035 and achieve carbon neutrality by 2060. So I think on this front, um, both countries can have some sort of healthy competition and see um, you know, whether their plans would work well um, to uh, green their economy. And at the same time, they could also have a lot of corporations in, for example, research and promoting uh, alternative energies and also technologies um, towards that common goal. U.S. President Joe Biden has claimed that the transatlantic alliance is back, meaning U.S.-EU relations. Uh, but the EU is very important to China as well, uh, given its recent uh, treaty uh, uh, agreements. Do you expect China to continue focusing extensively on Europe? Absolutely. Um, I think, you know, EU now is the second largest trading partner with China um, in 2020. And two countries have a lot of common interests um, on economic fronts. And both countries have just strengthened the deal um, to include many um, pr unprecedented, you know, uh, compromises. Um, for China, it has promised to open, you know, financial service sector, private health care, cloud computing, and many different other areas that um, were closed before. And they also agreed to include other issues like working conditions in this agreement. So I think China has made unprecedented efforts um, to build um, uh, sort of uh, allies in the world. And I think both countries have a lot of uh, fertile grounds for, you know, economic corporations. Um, I think that it's going to be beneficial for not just China, but also for EU, given that China is now uh, one of the fastest growth countries in the world and one of the biggest markets in the world.
And several European countries, are, of course, are also in the Belt and Road Initiative, which is key to Xi Jinping and to China. Uh, Yan Liang, thank you so much from Willamette University. Thank you, Brian.